Hello everybody! In our lesson for today, we are going to learn about polynomial identities. A mathematical statement that equates to polynomial expression, it is an identity if one side can be transformed in the other side using the mathematical operations. The polynomial identities are helpful use tools used to multiply and factor polynomials. And now let's see which are these polynomial identities. Let's have a look. So, a squared minus b squared. The first term, it's a perfect square. And the second one, it's a perfect square too. So, we can simply say a squared is the perfect square of a. So, it's like a all of it square minus b square it's the perfect square of b so b square and equals in this side it is given difference between perfect squares so this is an expression in the simplest form and this part will represent the product when the product it is given then we have to factor so we have to find the factors that in simplest form, when we multiply, they will give us this product. Simply say, so let's check the first term. It's the perfect square, as we said, of a square. So the a, the first a, a square, it came from a times a. So one a, we'll put it in the first bracket. And the second one in the second bracket. It is times between. So a times a equals a square. B squared, it came from B times B. So, B times B, it is B squared. As long between them, it is minus. So, neg negative will get it from positive times negative. So, the product between the perfect squares, it can be factored into real numbers. But there, don't forget, just to remind it to you, there is the sum between the perfect squares. And this one, when we will factor it, the factors, they will be complex numbers. So, as we said before, a squared, it came from a times a. b squared, it will be bi times bi and positive, negative. Now, let's say a times a, a squared, bi times bi, it's b squared, i squared, where i squared, it is negative 1, so it will be negative b squared. Positive, negative, it is negative, and negative, negative b squared, it will be positive b squared. So, take care, don't get confused between these two. So, difference between perfect square, it can be factored in real numbers. And the sum between perfect squares, it is factored in complex numbers. If it is about a cube, this is a perfect cube and this is a perfect cube. The first one, it's the perfect cube of a. Minus the second term, it's the perfect cube of B. And when we will factor it, we'll get these factors. First of all, the base is A, so I put A here. And I think about A times what gives I A cube. So that one is the A squared. From the second term, B cube, so here we put B times what gives us b cube, it will be b square. If between the perfect cubes it is minus operation, in the first bracket we put minus. Remember that the minus, the negative sign is given only once. So if I put the minus in the first bracket, in the second bracket here is no minus, not at all. In the middle, a times b. It can be the sum of perfect cubes. So the first cube, perfect cube, the second perfect cube. A cube, it came from A 
all of it cube plus b cube it's the perfect cube of b and this equals as we did before the same we'll do it now so from the first term the base is a so we put here a and now we say a times what equals a cube and this is the a square from the second term we have the base b and b times b square it will be equals b cube if between the perfect cube with perfect cubes we have plus in the first bracket we keep the plus and a square always positive b square always positive in the middle a times b with negative sign such that when we will distribute in simplest form it will be a cube plus b cube the square of the sum so sum as you know it's the answer in addition so now a plus b their sum square equals this is also called a binomial square now when you have to work with binomials remember that to be to to avoid mistakes in the product the number of the terms it will be given by the exponent plus 1 so if you do it mentally 2 plus 1 equals 3 so in the product we'll get three terms the first term we distribute the two the exponent we give it to each terms we give it to the first term so it will be a square we'll give it to the second term so it will be b square the term in the middle multiply them all so it will be 2 times a times b as long it is plus between the two terms everywhere between the terms it will be plus but not always square of a sum it can be difference of the uh, difference uh, the square of a difference so it can be a minus b all square and this equals as we said 2 plus 1 is 3 so in the product we will get in simplest form three terms the square give it to the first and give it to the last term it will be a square b square the b term is negative but when we square it it will be positive and in the middle multiply the terms all 2 times a times b and positive negative it will be negative now let's see on page 147 in your book we have the question number two and the question is use the polynomial identities to multiply the expressions so when we are asked to multiply it means the factors they are given and we look for the product in simplest form and we have 3x squared plus 5y cubed times 3x squared minus 5y cubed equals. So the two brackets, they represent the factors. In this case, we are not going to use the distributive property. Yes, it's just simple observation. The first term in the first bracket, it's the same the first term in the second bracket. And the second term, it's the same the second term. The difference between them is that in the first bracket between the terms plus and in the second minus. So we can say the first term, it's A. The second one, it is B plus. So we have the sum times the difference between the terms and this equals the first term times the first term it is a square the second term it's the same so b times b it will be b square positive times negative it is negative so we will apply the difference between perfect squares in answering this question and we put equals so the first term as we said it's the same 
Then 3x squared times 3x squared, 3 times 3, 9x exponent 4. The second term is the same. So 5 times 5, 25. Y cubed times Y cubed, it is Y6. Positive times negative equals negative. So this is product in simplest form without using the distributive property. 12 plus 15, all of it square. Inside the bracket, we have two terms and all of it exponent 2. So this is called the square of a binomial. And we said, if we have a binomial square in the product, do plus 1 in your mind for the square. And here you get a 3. So the 3 will represent the number of the terms. To get the terms, first of all, we distribute the 2 to each term inside the bracket. So it will be 12 square, 15 square, and in the middle, multiply them all. 2 times 12 times 15. It's plus between the terms, so everything is positive. And this equals Twelve square, it's one hundred forty-four. Plus two times fifteen, it is thirty. Times twelve, it will be three hundred and sixty. Plus fifteen square is two hundred twenty-five. All we have to do now is to simplify to add. So five plus zero, five plus four nine. Two plus six eight. Eight plus four twelve. Regroup the 1, 3 plus 3, 6, and plus 1 is 7. So this is product in simplest form. Let's try more. On page 148, we have question number 3. Use the polynomial identities to factor. Factors, they are values that we multiply. So if we don't know the factors, it means the product it is given. And this one, we will factor it. So let's say, m to 8 minus 9 n to 10 equals. The polynomial has two terms, so this is a binomial. What, we've been what we learned, it was the difference between the perfect squares and difference between the perfect cubes. So, that we will know which identity we have to choose. First of all, we have to check the first and second term, if they are perfect squares or if they are perfect cubes. And we have here 9. This 9 will help us understand that we have to check the perfect squares. So the 8, it will be, we know that 8, if we factor it, it came from 4 times 2. So instead of m to 8, we can write m to 4 and all of it square minus 9. It's the perfect square of 3. And 10, if we factor it, it will be 5 times 2. So we have the square here and we have the 2 here. So this term, it can be 3 times n to 5 all square. So we have difference between the perfect square. Square minus square equals. When we will factor it, we'll get two factors. From the first term, the square, it means we have m4 times m4. So m4 times m4 equals to m8. From the second one, we have 3n5, 3n5. So 3 times 3 is 9. And m5 to m5, it will be m to 10. To get the minus between them, one of them in one bracket between the terms we put minus, in the other one we put plus. Now we check. Maybe we can factor it more. 
The first step, it is a perfect square. It came M to 4, it came from west, M square, all of it square. But the second term, it is not a perfect square, which means we cannot factor it more. Let's see. 27x to 9 minus 343y to 6 and 27 it's the perfect cube of 3. If we find that one of the parts is a perfect cube, then we will check if all of these parts, they are perfect cubes or not, that we can check to factor the difference between the perfect cubes. So then we check every single part inside to be a perfect cube. X9 it's the perfect cube of x cube. So 3 times 3 equals 9. 343. It's the perfect cube of 7. And y6. It's the perfect cube of y square. 2 times 3 is 6. Then we can write. The first term, it's the perfect cube of 3 times x cubed. All of it, cube. So 3 cubed is 27, x cubed, all cubed, it is x to 9. Minus, the second term, it's the perfect cube of 7, y squared. The, so, the first term, it's like a cube minus b cube. So, when we will factor it, we'll get two factors. The first in the first bracket, we put the difference between them. And in the second one, it will be a square plus a b plus b squared. In our case, the a it's 3x cubed and the b it's the 7y squared. So then we can factor it into. We follow the rule. A, as we said, is 3x cubed minus b it's the 7y squared. times a square, which is 3x cubed, all square, plus a times b, it's the 3x cubed, times 7y square, plus b square, it's the 7y square, all square. And now we'll get its simplest form equals 3x cubed minus 7y squared times 3 squared 9x, 3 times 2, it is 6, plus 3 times 7, 21, x cubed, y squared, plus 7 squared, it is 49, and y, 2 times 2, it will be 4. Use the polynomial identities to multiply. So, the factors they are given, we look after the product in simplest form. I will write it again here, 2x plus 8y times 2x minus 8y. For the beginning, until you get used with them, it's good to write the rule under them. So in the first bracket, we have two terms binomial. In the second one, two terms binomial. It's just simple observation. The first term is the same. The second one is the same. So here, we will use a plus b times a minus b, which equals 
A times A, A squared. B times B, B squared. Positive negative is negative. This is called the difference between the perfect squares. And equals. So the first term multiply the first one because it's the same one. So 2x times 2x, it will be 4x squared. The second term, it's the same. So, and between them, it is times. We will do times between. So 8y times 8y, it will be 64y squared. And positive times negative, it is negative. So this is product, simplest form. These binomials, they are also called special binomials, yeah? We have x plus 3y cubed all square. Inside of the bracket, we have two terms, so this is a binomial square. I'm going to write the rule under it. The first term, a, plus the second one, it is b, and all square. In the product, always we said three terms. The square, I give it to the first term, so a square. Give it to the last term, so it will be b square. In the middle, do times between them all. So 2 times a times b. And plus, plus between. So in our case, the a is x, it's the first term. And b, the second term, is 3y cubed. So in the product... As we said, we'll get, because it's square, we'll get three terms. I put one, two, and three. The square, I give it to the first term. The square, I will give it to the second term. In the middle, multiply them all. Two times x times three y cubed plus between them, and now we get its simplest form. It will be x squared, already it's in simplest form, plus 2 times 3, 6, x, y cube, plus 3 squared, it is 9, y, between, it's a power of a power, so we have to multiply the exponents, 3 times 2, it is 6, and this is product simplest form. Use the polynomial identities to factor. So we have 36 a to exponent 6 minus 4 b square equals. So we have to factor it. Between the two terms, the common factor it is 4. So I'm going to take it out. Times 9 a6 minus b squared and equals now we look inside the bracket we have two terms very easy to observe the second one it's a perfect square so if one of the terms it's a perfect square we check if the other one it's a perfect square also and 9 it's the perfect square of 3 and 8 to 6 it's the perfect square of a cube. So then we have difference between the perfect squares. I will put the rule under it. So it's a square minus b square. And when we will factor it, it will be a minus b times a plus b. All we have to do now is to find the a and b correct from here. So we go down equals the first factor, keep it. As we said, 9, it came from 3, square, and a6, it's a cubed, and all of it square, minus b, all of it square. And equals 4 times so, the first term, the second one square, we will put 3a cubed, which means a minus b, times a plus b. The first term, the second term. The first term is 3a cubed, 
plus B. And this is the completed factorization. Eight x six minus y cube. That we will know which which uh, special identity to use. We check the terms first of all. So the first one eight. It is not a perfect square. 6, x to 6, it's a perfect square and it's a perfect cube. So, 8, it's a perfect cube. It's the perfect cube of 2 cube times x6, it's a perfect square and a perfect cube. But I will choose the cube to have the same exponent. So, it will be x square, all of it cube. Minus here, y cube, it's the perfect cube of y. So then we, we can write the first term, it's 2x squared all cube minus y cube equals. So this difference represents the difference between cubes. And if you remember, a cube minus b cube equals a minus b times a square plus a b plus b square where a is the first term and b is the second one so in our case a is 2x square and b is the y so this one we will factor it into a it's 2x square minus the b it's the second one y times a squared, which is 2x squared, all of it squared, plus a times b, so ab, so 2x squared times y plus b squared, b is y, so y squared. Equals, I will get its simplest form. 2 square 4 and x square all square it will be x to exponent 4 plus 2 x square y and plus y square. m to 9 plus 27 and 6 equals. 9, it is not a perfect square. 9, I can rewrite it as 3 times 3. So, this m to 9, it's the perfect cube. So, it came from a3, all of it, cube. If one of the terms, it's a perfect cube, then the other one, it has to be a perfect cube also, that we can factor it. And 27, it's the perfect cube of 3. And n to 6 is the perfect cube of n squared. So all of it, cube equals. Here we are going to use the sum of cubes. So the first one, this is a cube plus b cube, which equals a plus b times a square minus a b plus b square. So equals. In our case, the a we said it's m cube and the b is 3n squared. So a plus b it will be m cube plus 3n squared times a square, where a is m cube, square minus a times b, it's m cube times 3 n square plus the b is 3 n square and all of it cube square. Get it into simplest form. m 
cube all square, so between the exponent is the bracket we will multiply, it will be m6 minus 3 m cube n square plus 3 square, it is 9, and 2 times 2 is 4. Thank you.